I enter this whodunit as a kid in a large family, steadfast Christian parents. Half of us look like my dad. Taller, stronger, broader, good teeth. <laughs> Granny was uh, Scottish royalty. My mom's half shorter, maybe not as bright, poor teeth, my hobbit half. Except for one sister who was shorter than even a hobbit, and she had thick black hair. She knew she was different. She even started referring to herself as just me. One day she asked Dad, why is she like that? And he said, I was tired that day. <laughs> Dad always told the truth, just not the whole truth. We figured that Mom was not so tired and neither was the plumber, <laughs> you know, or some other whodunit. So after Sister Just Me was born, the family moved to a new town and new jobs. I was a late bloomer. I got my birds and the bees talk when I was 14. Dad said, stay away from girls until you're through with college. They're a distraction. <laughs> Half true. He forgot the part about erections and orgasms. So they were going out when they were 14, my mom and dad, and then seven long years of Puritan procrastination before they wed. But they were apart during college. Dad and his dad, and like those before, they went to school in Maine. Rugged, handsome, Phi Beta Kappa, Summa Cum Laude, men of letters and languages. My dad was center on the football team, too. And I've seen pictures. He had a sexy smile. <laughs> and he stayed there over the summers, living with cousins, plinking cans, and going down to the lighthouse. He had fond memories, but he kept them in here. All we knew was Dad liked old cars and lighthouses. We had a 35 Chevy with a rumble seat that he never got to restore sitting in our barn, and on the mantel was a picture of him beneath the lighthouse on the rocks gazing out at the sea. We were brought up being told it was his favorite place on earth. Now, I take a 35 coupe and a gang of handsome Mainers and maybe a case of beer in a lighthouse. That's a party. You know, I've been to lighthouses. So um, sure enough, you know, it's the, the crashing of the surf and the cold nights that make people want to cuddle together. And don't forget the rotating hot orb around an enormous phallic symbol. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I have no doubt about what went down at the lighthouse. I just don't know who done it. The lighthouse is the only one who knows. I had a fiance, and she was in love with someone else. And I had a lover who might have made a great partner, but I done it. I chose the fiance, forsaking my heart. Mom had said, she's a peach. Dad gave a level, approving smile. Were they fit judges, or do you think they just saw somebody who looked a lot like them? If my dad was here now, I would ask him, who done it at the lighthouse? Well, you know, late in life I rebirthed him as a friend, a confidant, and I would have asked. But you know, he did the same thing that the rest of us do. He went back home, married the hometown girl, and you know the rest. So I asked my mom, hey mom, why was the, dad, why was, uh, the lighthouse dad's favorite place on earth? And she just started moving her tongue around in her mouth, pushing her dentures around, you know, like there was a piece of gristle in there. I don't know, she told me. And then she swallowed the whodunit. I decided then and there I wasn't going to ask where my sister, just me, came from. Look, there is such a thing as ancestral trauma for white men. After nine generations on these shores, I am still 96 0.3% white Scottish hobbit. And in every one of those generations, the recurring whodunit is a man not unlike myself who chooses to marry a woman not unlike his mother. In every one of those generations, the recurring whodunit is a man who forsakes his own heart and fills himself with shame. In every one of those generations, a man has learned how not to smile. 
it just asks for infidelity, and not as a weapon, but as a cry for help from people who don't know how to talk about whodunits. For generations, my people have looked for a safe harbor, only to be blown by ancestral winds back into the rocks. I, too, dream of lighthouses. In naming the whodunit tonight, in telling you this story of how actions against our own hearts run deep in my family, back through all the lighthouses, back to the standing stones they resemble. In naming the whodunit, I'm healing myself and my ancestors. All of them were guilty whodunits. And so am I. <laughs>